with the Joker cannot win. God needs its truth. The Ariza. The Ariza. The Ariser. I like that. I killed those people. That's what I can be. No, no, you can't. You're not. I'm whatever Gotham needs me to be. Pulling in. The Ariser. The Ariser. We deserved but the hero. The Ariser. Nothing less than the night. Welcome back. This is the second part of the Joker theory. I know I said it would take a while before I put out the second one, but I just enjoy putting the first one out. That I just went to research straight straight away. I mean, it was just the time between it being uploaded, me watching it to see how good it was, and then I just went straight to the research. So, um, first of all, I'd like to say last video was mostly wrong. I thought of it, but then the more I dug in for the facts for this video, the more I realized it wasn't just those three. There's more to it. There's a lot more to it. So we'll start off with the fact that in one issue, uh, there was a picture of the Joker holding up three cards, one being a comedian, one a gangster, and one a red. Each of these represent a story, or like a sort of idea, of what the Joker's origins could be. And I'm still agreeing with what I said the three Jokers were, except the Suicide Squad Joker. He's probably not the one that, um, is the New 52 one, which is the one whose face was mutilated. That gets a lot more in depth and weird, because I started off by reading uh, Death of the Family, which is the first New 52 one to introduce the Joker. Um, but the thoughts are, instead of it just being these three Jokers from the beginning, Maybe it started out as one Joker, one or two, because I'm still thinking about this, but it might be, um, there's, all, there's only one problem, I'll talk about that in a bit, but it probably started out with Cartoon Joker, the Joker from, like, Batman the Animated Series and the Arkham games and those sorts of things, all the ones voiced by Mark Hamill. Then, because of Flashpoint, it goes to Martha Wayne. Now, as Martha Wayne being the Joker, she has... Scars on her cheeks by cutting her, cutting her, which is similar to the Heath Ledger, which we'll come back to in a bit. But then it goes to the three Jokers. Three Jokers might be representations about the Joker himself actually not knowing what his real origins are, and these three origins being separate ones that he saw up on different occasions. And his quote: "If I own to have an origin, I prefer it to be multiple choice." This is truly suggesting to me that. He probably only had one origin in the beginning, but because of Flashpoint, it's amplified this into three separate people. Well, I then went and read uh, Zero Year, thinking about this, led me to believe that the new 52 Joker is Red Hood 1. The Joker, still with the Killing Joke picture up of him, is still the Killing Joke 1, who is the unnamed comedian from that movie, and the third one is the gangster Jack Napier, so most of it's staying exactly the same. So, but now we can go more into depth of the actual origins. So, the new 52 one started out leading the group of Red Hoods, before Batman was actually Batman. And then, with a lot of other stories, like The Man Who Laughs, and, uh, like, The Man Who Laughs is uh, a graphic novel that introduces the Joker in a sort of way for the first time. This is the New 52 description of him. Uh, so it is saying that this one came out of the factory of like Red Hood as Batman finds a Red Hood mask. Something else though about the death of the family one. Although 
it originally I wasn't sure that this one would be a Red Hood. The one other person to appear, Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn uh, was forced to wear the Red Hood costume by this Joker. This Joker, though, if he wasn't Red Hood before, would have had no clue. And one other thing, Harley Quinn clearly stated that she that he wasn't the Joker she used to know. Which would mean she used to work for a different Joker, and may have just come across this. Um, I've got this of the idea of the movie The Prestige, which had Christian Bale and Hugh Jackman as the main characters in it, where they were trying to come up with an awesome magic trick, and this is set in like the 1900s, and um, Christian Bale has him and somebody else, well, they're also played by Christian Bale, but both characters are two separate people. One of them loves the character's wife, but the other one loves somebody else. And it's sort of like that, in a way. Um, now, we go back to the Scar Joker, as we're going to call him. The Heath Ledger Joker. Uh, he is the one thing, the one blip that I cannot actually say what really happened. My guess is as good as yours at the minute, but I suspect he may have been um, either an alternate v version of the Joker or a second one from the original universe. This, though, is really confusing me since if you've read all the annuals and stuff. When the Dark Knight movie came out, there was an annual the next year in 2009. In this, there was some comic strips of Batman and the Joker, Christian Bale and um, Heath Ledger. But... One crucial detail was missing. Heath Ledger no longer had his scars. That was the one difference. And that really puzzled me. But what if... He got his scars after? So, we'll leave it to next week, guys. But, then, be prepared for the next Joker theory. The Joker gained... How the Joker gained his scars. But before that, the timeline. So, it starts off with... The cartoon Joker, then it goes to Martha Wayne. Then, the first Joker of it is Zero Year. Then it goes to the Killing Joke. And then, we reach the issue where Batman actually releases the information. Somewhere in between, we would have chanced upon the other Joker. But we still can't put everything into place. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. And um, next time, we'll finish the job. Goodbye. Please subscribe.